Hello guys, this is Universal Giant, and welcome back for more of Let's Play Mother 3. Not seen off screen, I went through this entire area and forgot to hit the record button. This is why you make backup save files, people. Anyway, in the last episode, we were chased further up Thunder Tower by Facade, who made his first appearance since the Drago did him in in Chapter 3, and we made our way into this really bizarrely out of place room. And here we'll find a couple of presents, like the Saltwater Gun. A major look, and an enemy! This little fellow is the surprise box. Don't underestimate him either. I wonder what he's weak to. Even last time I didn't figure out what he was weak to. I'll try freeze. This background is pretty trippy, too. I think I'm just gonna stare at it for a while. Well, that didn't last very long. Did we even take damage in that battle? I don't think we did. I think we deserved a little change in music. I'm getting sick of this. Hello, how are you today, Your Highness? I can select a nice song for you if you'd like. Would you like to listen to something? Absolutely. Great, then my selection will be... It's kind of like elevator music, I'll just let it play for a while. Let's explore a couple of the things around here. A guitar. Strum strum. What could this be? Maybe some sign of kind of gaming console? What about this thing? A big fluffy teddy bear. It almost seems like it could take your place for you. Another throwback to Earthbound. Plenty of them in this room for some reason. I don't know why there's a whole room full of Earthbound references. Tiny cars are speeding around. Secret herb. Can't have too many of those. A soccer ball. There are many still unopened presents here. Alright, let's listen to some other music. There's at least one more selection that this jukebox will occasionally play. And speaking of Earthbound references, we have returned to the drugstore. And this yo-yo. If you take Master King P's very precious friends yo-yo, I will be mad, 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 very mad, 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 mad. Is that boss music? Little Miss Marshmallow suddenly attacked. Let's get straight to debuffing its offense because she is not a pushover. And because she is a robotic enemy, she will be fairly weak to electric attacks which we will promptly use after we debuff her a bit. I also haven't mentioned that robotic enemies are also weak to a certain item. The saltwater gun, which we'll make fair use of later on. So I'll explain those when we get to them. Pretty self-explanatory, though. Alright, so let's have Kumatora start using some thunder. Little Miss Marshall activated the ultra ticked off system and now she means business. I'm surprised that didn't do as much as I expected it to. Alright, let's really get to bashing her head in. Attacking wildly. Even that's not so bad, actually. Man, the last time I did this, she really gave us a wall thing. Attacking wildly again. Even that we can sort of put up with. At least she's not hitting bony. I think we're good for one more round. Holy crap, that went well. <laughs> yeah, in the last battle, there was a total of 30 hit points between the two of my party members that were still alive. Lucas and Kumatora were dead. That went a lot better. I'm surprised. 
Well, I guess that's what I get for having to do a take twice. You're not looking too good, little Miss Marshmallow. You reap what you sow, 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 sow. Greetings, cheese popsicle. The number you have dialed is currently out of pork chops. From east to west it goes, goes. Broken, broken, oh, so, so, so broken. Work long plank. And all that just so we could open up the container she was protecting and get a friend's yo-yo. Now what we can do with this is equip it to either Kumatora or Lucas. I like to give it to Lucas because he does more physical attacking. And it improves our offense a little bit and our speed a little bit. It can not hurt to have a little bit more offense, but the speed doesn't really matter because Lucas isn't going to be outspeeding anybody at this point. So let's just heal up a bit, and when we get out, I'll rearrange a couple of items, and give Boney and Duster some nice attacking things that we'll be making use of shortly. But first, let's pay a visit to the Save Frog here, pick up some DP, so we can get stuff from the vending machine up there. So I'll do a little off-screen selling and inventory shuffling. And it's at this point that I would highly suggest you get rubber capes for all of your human party members. Because we'll be encountering several enemies with strong electric attacks, and it's a good idea to have those equipped because they will almost nullify them. They'll only take a small amount of damage. And let's get a couple of pencil rockets for Boney. Or just one. And finally head further up Thunder Tower. And we reach the point where the electricity actually starts coming out of the machine, and now we can attack it in the form of an enemy. The Short Circuit Zap. So let's see if I can get one of these fancy combos. PK Flash! I'm really hoping you don't... Okay, just crying and just crying. That could have been a lot worse. Not you too! Okay, the equipment blocked it. That means... <laughs> I'm afraid of what that might have been. Okay, PK Flash. I was hoping to hold off on explaining that until Lucas learned it. What PK Flash does, it makes all of your party members cry. If it hits... And it can also cause some other weird status ailments. Including paralysis and instant death. I'm actually curious of what equipment item of Lucas has blocked the thing. Well, I guess we won't know. Sakumator is learning another PSI technique, as is Lucas. And now we get a sign that tells us to beware of electrical discharges. We really could have used that earlier, couldn't we? I'm comboing to that. I, I was comboing to that a lot better the first time around. Not so much now. It's the kind of song that I usually can't combo to after a minute or so. Whoa, jeez! Hey, Lucas, are you alright? And it seems like every time Lucas gets struck by lightning or some other strange event happens, we learn a new PSI technique, PK Flash. Now, I don't like to use this because it isn't very reliable, and the instant death does not happen on any big enemies like bosses. But I suppose it's worth trying out. And if I don't try it out, somebody remind me to. So Kumatora learned PSI Magnet Alpha, which steals PSI from enemies. And Lucas and Boney both got level ups out of that battle, and Lucas learned counter and shield. Now, what a counter does, it's like a shield, except half of the damage is reflected onto the enemy that dealt you the damage. And PSI shield is for PSI techniques. Whoa, who the hey are you? Actually, I guess it doesn't matter, huh? Just the fact that you were able to come this far is awesome, which makes you awesome. I think I might be in love. My name is Sheep. Don't ask any more than that. Trying to seem mysterious is my hobby. Well, you're certainly mysterious. Now, we are approaching the end of Thunder Tower, which means I would like to heal up a bit. So, is everybody healed up? Let's make sure Boney's healed up. Everybody else will be alright. 
Suspicious individuals detected inside the de generator room. Activating defense system. Repeat, activating defense system. All personnel, it would be nice if you'd evacuate immediately. That's some defense system. Mr. Genitor. The boss of the fifth chapter. Now, do not try attacking him with physical attacks right off the bat, because he will counter them. Instead, let's start by debuffing his offense, and using a saltwater gun, which I mentioned is very effective against robotic enemies. Mr. Janitor is no exception to that rule. So there's not going to be much comboing in this, ta in this battle. That was a very strong attack. Especially considering Kumator is wearing the rubber cape. So I suppose we'll have her heal herself and have you use the scary mask. Now what you have to be careful of is Boney can't equip a any item that will decrease the strength of Mr. Shanator's electric attacks. So if Boney is struck by one of those electric attacks, he's in trouble. Most of the other guys will be alright. Let's go with more love, more tickle sticking, just because I don't feel like using Duster to... Well, I'll use Duster as a demonstration to show what happens if you try a physical attack while this guy's up. And let's try a freeze. You may be tempted to use a thunder against this guy, but do not use thunder. He'll absorb the attack and it will do no damage. And that's what happens when you try to do a physical attack. So now that he's storing electricity, he's preparing for one of his strongest attacks. So make sure Brony is fully healed and everybody that does not have a rubber cape equipped is also fully healed. Duster, you're not going to go before he does the attack. Well, you're going to go before, so I don't want to have you do a physical attack. You try freeze and... Uh, bomb. Now he's going to use his Discharge Zap attack after storing electricity from one turn. It'll do okay damage to us because we're equipped with the Rubber Cape, and it'll do a massive amount of damage to Boney. But now that he is down, we can wail away at him. And have you do that, and actually you need to heal up Boney, don't you? So let's heal up Boney. And because Mr. Janitor is down, he won't strike us with electricity as a counter for using physical attacks. Now each turn he's storing electricity, he'll gain HP back, but it's not enough that we can't offset. We should be getting pretty close to the end, though. So two turns after restoring his strength, he is going to be ready to attack. So I will not use a physical attack with... Lucas. I will, however, keep doing what I'm doing with the others. Okay, Lucas did attack first. My bad. And now that his charger was broken, he is not going to be able to do much of anything. Except die. And now that we've destroyed Mr. Janitor... Thunder Tower should not be working anymore, which means Tasmali won't be hit by any more bolts of lightning! Hooray! We saved the village! And everybody except Lucas gets a level up. Poor kid. A serious error has occurred in the generator. A serious error has occurred in the generator. All personnel evacuate immediately. Repeat, it would be nice if you'd evacuate immediately. And of course, Facade followed us up. You! How dare you destroy this vital system of ours! And the only place we have left to run is outside. Hmm. I guess it's the case of fools like smoke enjoy heights. Nwee! He's not very good with his proverbs. And as you can see, we've reached the very top of Thunder Tower. And there is nowhere for us to go. We're completely cornered. 
Nuihihihi! You pathetic fools, there's nowhere to run now! Nuihihihi! You've been a real thorn in our side, you know that? What's funniest of all is that the happiness could have been yours had you simply stayed in Tasmalay and lived quietly without a care in the world. Alright, it's all set then? I'll be done here soon, so leave the mother pork ship on standby above. Thunder Tower is no longer usable. But this is the perfect chance to eliminate the whole lot of you in one fell swoop. It's a bit much for three lousy rats, but our king just loves being flashy. Three? What about Boney? So I've decided that you and Thunder Tower can disappear flashily together. Sounds like they're going to destroy Thunder Tower with us on it. And it looks like he's going to make his getaway on that mother pork ship. So the pig mask drops a ladder for him. Well, looks like my ride is here. Later days, pals. Okay, all set. Destroy Thunder Tower. Well, Lucas, we haven't known each other long, but it's been fun. I'll never forget about you guys. Nui! Nui! Well, he does deserve it for leaving those banana peels all over the place. But that's quite a fall from Facade. I don't know if he can survive that. And of course, Facade isn't here to be picked up, so we get to hitch a ride on the ladder. All right, let's grab onto it. Rope Snake, you're up. So now we've latched onto the ladder on the mother pork ship. Is that? Yeah. They're trying to shake us off. Lucas, Kumatora, Boney, hold on tight now. Duster, it's me, the Rope Snake. I know this isn't the best time to chat, but I have some good news for me and bad news for you. The good news for me is that although we haven't known each other long, I'm now a major character in the story thanks to you. And the bad news for you is that my jaw isn't sturdy enough to support the weight of three people and one dog. In other words, my jaw is at its limit. This is literally jaw-dropping. And there they go. The masked man takes one look back at us and heads back into the ship. So with our four party members plummeting out of the sky, Thunder Tower destroyed, and Facade, who knows what happened to him. We reach the end of chapter 5. Moving puppets made from clumps of earth. A tower that can fire thunderbolts on demand. An extensive highway system. Ships that fly through the sky. The enemy that Lucas and his companions must stand up against has grown to such an enormous scale. Do they even stand a chance against this vile and powerful nemesis? No. Common sense must be ignored in a situation like this. Even if there is only a one in a billion chance of victory, that means there is also a one in a billion opportunity of turning the tables completely. Will Lucas, Kumator, and Duster be separated once again? Or will they work together again to overcome the obstacles that stand in their way? From the flying ship, a masked man looks down upon Lucas and his friends. His profile is still very youthful. The tale now moves to its next chapter, with an almost certain promise of battles far more intense than ever before. And with that, we reach the conclusion of Chapter 5. And in the next episode, we will begin Chapter 6. This is Universal Giant, and I'll see you guys next time.